my site supervisor and I have done a layout of this house. Today I'm going to be installing a vanity light. I'm going to be showing you the process for roughing in a metallic box. First, I'm going to drill a three quarter inch hole in the adjacent stud. Sorry. I'm going to be laying out my vanity light in this bathroom. I'm using a fiberglass folding rule. This is an old timey craftsman tool, but I like it because it fits concisely in my pocket or pouch. It's insulated so I don't have the risk of electrical shock and it's highly versatile. I'm going to be installing the vanity light at 72 inches. I'm making a V-shaped mark because it's more distinctive than a straight horizontal mark. It's harder to miss. And based upon my layout, I actually need to blo add blocking to the face of this 2x4 in order to center my light at the proper location. I'm using square drive screws because they're much harder to strip than Phillips. I advise you to transition your entire hardware crib for coarse thread wood screws to square drive versus the number two Phillips. Ever popular and all sufficient. I'm going to secure this blocking. To the face of framing, careful to match up the stud faces so that nothing's protruding from the wall cavity. This box is a half inch deep metallic pancake box. It's equipped by our warehouse team with a grounding screw, which is required by code, and a non-metallic grommet. This grommet is, functions as a clamp to provide a bushing to the cable entering the box, as well as strain relief. I'm gonna secure this box at the required height to the face of framing. I'm entering a 14-2 pre-stripped Romex cable through my bushing into the box. I want not less than quarter inch of outer jacket inserted into any electrical box and not too much more than that or my box becomes congested. I'm going to lay the, the conductors flat and in order to pass my rough in inspection with the city inspector, I'm going to ground the grounding conductor to the ground screw on the box. It is required that ground screws be green in color to identify their purpose and listing. I'm going to tuck my conductors into the box. At this point, they're secured other than staple. I am going to provide a service loop and I have 12 inches along the length of the wire from the point of entry to the first point of securement. That service looper seven is inside the wall cavity, ready to go. Some of the concepts behind locating this vanity light include the final selection, the lighting selection on the part of the homeowner about what type of light and what location is therefore required. If the sconce has a downturn to it and this light is located for the lady of the house, this is probably a good elevation for the final fixture because for the purposes of applying makeup, addressing yourself in the morning, you want that illumination to be at your face level or close to it so you don't have shadowing from outside. So this location was selected in conjunction between the homeowner and the designer and we followed the plans. Um, this service loop is intentional. Um, it must be within 12 inches from the point of securement to the box in this situation. But the service loop provides extra in case the wiring gets damaged when drywall is being hung over the surface of this box by a roto zip or a tool of that type. And the length of the block that I cut is completely arbitrary. There's no magic to it. I did cut it long enough though for just two minor considerations. I didn't want my screws when I secured the block to the stud to split the block and I wanted to have a little bit of latitude to move that box if required because homeowners and designers are always changing their minds.